right, my next guest says U.S. equities are unlikely to find valuation support at current levels with the combined PEs right now ratio. Take a look at this. If you combine trailing forward PE ratios, we're really up there. We're above one standard deviation. And of course, my guest believes that's a problem for the markets. I want to bring in 42 macro founder and CEO Darius Dale. There is. Welcome to the show, my man. Charles, happy new year, bro. It's good to see so, you. So here's the thing. I'm going to go back here to, to this chart of the winners today. Mm -hmm. If you look at the P.E. ratios for NVIDIA, a and, uh, uh, you know, ANET, Advanced Micro, some of these other names, I mean, th these, these are out of this world. So this is where I have trouble when, 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 when someone tells me, hey, be careful of the market because there won't be any valuation expansion. The, the winners seem to have these outsized valuations to begin with. Well, stocks can go up for two reasons, right? The earnings and the price. And what we're saying is the, the market is unlikely to find valuation support but the actual earnings growth is likely to deliver because gotcha. we continue to have positive economic outcomes. And is that outcomes. what you're looking for with some of these, some names that you have? A absolutely. We're still in Goldilocks, man. Last time we were here, we were talking about Goldilocks. Goldilocks persists. What would upset that? Last week we had the job support. What would upset that for you? Well, absolutely. Right now, the market is pricing in Goldilocks because it's coalescing around a soft landing. What would upset that is if the market started to believe in a no landing scenario or a hard landing scenario, and both of those are increasingly less likely as, as per our analysis of the data. Let's talk about uh, the message in the market. I love your work because you, yeah. you, you have different you know, things that you look at. You look at the crowding model, yep. you look at the dispersion model and positioning model. Uh, let's talk about what they're telling you, the crowding model, not generating any bullish or bearish signals, sort of a neutral sign. Yeah, we finally got that pullback we needed to see after the big run we saw in November. December. Was that enough? Last week was enough? Well, it, looks, it looks like it is. <laughs> <laughs> Back to that chart. <laughs> exactly. There's a lot of folks still on the sideline who have not right. participated right. in the markets over the last year or so, and they're going to have to chase this soft landing trade higher over the next few months in our opinion. Dispersion model. Dispersion balance model flow, the balance flow into defensive and cyclical. Not signaling a bunch of factor risk right now. Okay, positioning model. Retail trader position likely to be overweight stocks. For a lot of folks uh, on Wall Street, that's a red flag. You know, yeah. oh, too many retailer folks are too bullish. Get yeah. out the old Joe Kennedy shoeshine boy thing. You buying into that? Yeah, I'm buying into that from a tactical standpoint, just from a very short-term perspective. That is a bear signal, but from a medium-term perspective, if you look at investor allocations, they're not quite at levels that have historically uh, been associated with bull market peaks, so there's more room to go on the positioning side. And it is intriguing to me. This is a chart I started to show with because this is one week, at the, you know, and again, this, these small cap was supposed to rule. Mm -hmm. Small cap was supposed to rule, and I, I don't, what does it take? I mean, do you ride the winners? Is, is there a lesson here about riding the winners until they become losers, because the guessing game of when to get off of these things seems to fail all the time. 100%. And we have to understand what economic regime we're in, what financial market regime we're in. And right now, we're in a regime that actually favors large cap growth over things like small cap value. And so, in our opinion, uh, this recovery that what we're would, seeing. What would change that? Effective. We need to go into something that looks like a hard landing or soft landing, or no landing from a data standpoint, and we're just not getting, seeing that in the data. So, this jobs report to you, uh, d does that. Back so far, it's a, a, does it back yeah. a soft landing? Yeah, both the jobs report and the December ISM services PMI, which came out shortly after the jobs report, uh, both supported that soft landing scenario. Did it get a little bumpier for you, though? Because the nuance of the reports, for instance, uh, the ISM services, 43 unemployment. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Massive contraction, uh, 680,000 fewer people in the labor force, 600,000 fewer people working. Uh, it's a bumpy ride. It's a yeah. bump. It, I'm not saying that the door plug fell out, but I'm just saying it's looking <laughs> like a little bumpy ride right now. Yeah, it's definitely a little bit of turbulence, and we should expect to see a little bit of turbulence, right? We do need to see a period of below-trend growth to have some confidence that inflation is going to stay at 2%. Because it's one thing if inflation goes to 2% and re-accelerates right. from there. We need to keep inflation at 2%, so we actually do need to see some of that economic turbulence. We, we just don't think it's going to turn into a hard landing. My man, Charles, Happy appreciate year. you. Happy Thank to you very much. Good to see you.